a lot of ladies and people who were at home, perhaps incapacitated to a certain extent, but could knit, loved this idea. And it grew. <laughs> It sounds like a bit of a pun, but the scarf grew and grew and excelled going round the circumference of the hospice. We decided this was too good to let go. We couldn't stop then because sponsorship came into it. We were asking people when they were knitting lengths of scarf if they would also raise money. So they'd ask friends or neighbours, whoever, to sponsor them for so many say six inches or 12 inches, whatever. So the money was coming in. Um, there were a few problems. <coughs> but with every good idea, you get problems. And one of them was where to locate this scarf. Because as it's growing, you would be amazed at the amount of room it took. You know, when you've got good old wool, solid wool there, the bales were growing, loads of them. and. I contacted a local haulage firm who were very, very kind and agreed to give us a warehouse. And they stored these bales of wool in polythene for us because the idea was catching on everywhere. And we let it roll over for a couple of years. Now, initially, it was going to be just for six months, <coughs> culminated Christmas or whatever. But in fact, it rolled on for over two years, and by now, we had a full warehouse of bales. It was absolutely incredible. And that's, that's fabulous, because now we've raised 60,000 pounds just in sponsorship. People are having fun. The charity, your benevolent society, is getting profile and prominence because they're, they're good for <coughs> opportunities and everyone enjoys that. They're good opportunities for <coughs> social situations. Okay. And uh, we felt that we could go stage further. We raise money. Now let's get make more of this and go for that initial idea, a world record, the longest scarf in the world, and get into the Guinness Book of Records. So we decided to have it measured up at the Millennium Stadium here in Cardiff, because we knew that would attract PR, we knew that would attract coverage in press and media, and it did. <coughs> um, we spent a very hot, sunny June day at the Millennium Stadium with their very kind permission, and we actually covered the whole of the floor of the stadium twice. Now to get into the Guinness Book of Records you have to get someone along to measure it and officially declare that everything was right on the day, there was no tomfoolery and it's measured up. I mean we had to get special equipment to to measure. We were it, it was exhausting. We were covered in dust and whatever but it it attracted interest because some of the lads, the, the, the rugby players, got interested. They were doing a bit of training and they got involved. So, you know, I mean, they, they were high, good, good names at, at that time. So television came down both morning, afternoon and evening because we didn't finish till nine o'clock in the evening. We started at six in the morning with this band of my limited group of uh, team, but volunteers. And that's the important part. We had lots of volunteers along. We had ladies sitting in the stand who'd been knitting for us. We had some gentlemen who'd been knitting <laughs> for us. Um, you look as though you'd be pretty good at knitting. <laughs> you struck me slightly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to answer. Maybe not. I've all caught you around me. We had to learn a bit of entertainment and refreshments as well because we had people in the stands watching all this going on, coming and going through the day. We got the television coverage. We um, actually made that a Welsh record. It, it's, it's in the Guinness Book of Records as being the longest scarf. We raised onwards of £100,000 and most of all, it, it was just a fantastic event for everyone. Everyone enjoyed it. So many people took part. 
And all it is, is building on a very simple idea. So that you don't have to go to any great lengths to think of something really exotic and nobody's ever done this before. That, that's terribly difficult. It's really hard. There, there's hardly anything that is that new. You know, maybe, yes, we, we've got e-mails and, and or everything that comes along with computers and sort of the new world there. That's fine. But really and truly, with hands-on <coughs> fundraising, it has to be the sort of thing that you did on the walks, the runs, or something, that, an idea that you can give to people to build on. And it, I've used the scarf as an example. I hope you, I hope I've explained really in a way that you can, you can use that. You can substitute the scarf for anything at all. It's getting people to buy into the idea and being able to raise funds as a result of that. And you've got a goal, you've got your 125 years or whatever you want to make of it. 